Today we have progress. This is only the first networking demo of this little MMO project that we have going for ourselves. So let me start at the server here and then I'm also going to start the uh, client and then you can see uh, the camera got messed up during my changes but now our little man is moving jaggedy and that's because we're doing this like network physics simulation which is going on now. You kind of see that we're sending bytes but we're actually sending data from the client to the server and then back from the server to the client. So it's kind of like the client sends inputs to the server, the server does all of the physics calculations and then sends back the result back to the client and then the client uses that physics result to uh, actually render him to the screen so let's look a little bit into the code about how we did this so uh, we changed a lot of or actually we didn't change too many files but we obviously had to change our client and server binaries um, and then we also changed some of the dependencies that they had such as the ECS system the networking system and then some common code we wanted to share in our MMO project so let's get to it we'll start with the networking go. most of the meat of the code is in there so the first thing we did was we made a WebSocket type or, or sorry a WebSocket component when we have multiple players on the server, we want to, we, we needed a way to track which player is associated with which connection. And uh, that's just going to hold the actual uh, network connection to that player. And then we can easily look up with their entity ID, see which connection they are, and then we can send data to them as needed. And then we wrote a uh, client send update function. And the goal of this function is to just send data from the client to the server. And the only data that we're sending right now is the physics.input data. So we're basically going to loop over every single entity that has a physics.input component and then we're going to get that data and then we're going to serialize it. Right now we're using JSON just because it's kind of like a naive uh, serialization method. We'll move to something a little bit more proper later on, but uh, that's what we're sticking with for now. So we serialize it into a byte stream and then we send it on that particular client's uh, network connection. So they have the, the con passed into this uh, system function. Next we wrote a client receive function and the goal of this one is basically to take in a network update from the server and then process that uh, as kind of like the ultimate truth of where everybody is on the server. So what we started with now, uh, we're just kind of considering like the one-on-one -on -one case where there's only one player on the server. So basically what we do is we made this new data type called the server update, which was also uh, encoded with JSON. But in that server update message, we basically have two pieces of data. We have an ID, which represents the ID of that player. Then we have the physics transform of the player as well. So then that data can be used to like snap the player's character to where the server says that they should be. So let's look down at uh, the server update data type that we built. Yeah, so just an ID and then a transform. And as you recall, the physics.transform uh, just has the X and Y position of the player. So then we have a little bit of convoluted logic here. Eventually we need a way to log the player in, but we don't have that right now. So kind of as a workaround, what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the player has already received their first update. And if they haven't, we're going to write this other new component called body. Uh, and we need this because we need a way for the client to spawn players. So uh, eventually the, like we'll send a body uh, with like some sort of type inside of it to indicate like, yes, you should render this sort of sprite, but we don't have that logic just yet so we just send like the general body type uh, on the very first message that the client receives from the server and then uh, for the server send update function this is basically um, when the server needs to send a, a world update to each player so what they're gonna do is basically loop over every entity that has a WebSocket. Uh, remember we kind of store each one in an entity by entity basis so loop over all the web sockets that we have available and then we're basically just gonna send the transform that they have attached to this entity ID so everybody's just gonna get their position right now and we basically just wrap ID and transform data into that server update data struct, serialize it with JSON once again, write it, write the uh, byte stream to our WebSocket, and then we're good to go at that point. Then in our server main.go, we also modified our serve netcon function, which was used to uh, basically serve every WebSocket connection, kind of on the receive side. So this is the function that receives data from the client. Before it was just uh, reading data and then printing it out, but now we actually know what data is being sent. It's a physics.input message. So we're going to unmarshal that data, and then we're just going to write it to our entity store. So when it is ends up happening because we kind of have these two ECS storages, one on the client and one on the server. And we're kind of replicating data across the network to each ECS storage. And then the last uh, major uh, update that we did uh, in this episode was uh, we modified our run game function. And uh, what we modified it to do was to use this fixed time step variable properly. So right now we have three systems that get passed in. We have an input system, a physics system, and a render system. So the input and render systems, we want to run basically as fast as possible. We want to collect and render data to the user as much as we can. The physics system, however, we want to be like fairly deterministic. So we want it to operate on this fixed time step. So what we end up doing is we have this outer for loop, which will run basically every single time. And in that we have three for loops, one that runs our input systems, one that runs our physics systems, and then one that runs our render systems. So the special thing that you can see here that we do for the physics systems is we basically track this accumulator variable now, and we check to make sure it's larger than the fixed time step. And if it is larger than the fixed time step, then we'll execute all of our physics systems and we'll subtract 
out of that accumulator variable. So what ends up happening is at the end of this outer for loop is uh, we increment our accumulator based off of the delta time from the last render frame. The rendering system's kind of producing time into the accumulator. And then once the accumulator uh, becomes larger than the fixed time step, we go ahead and execute all of our physics systems and then we subtract out that fixed time step. As you saw in the intro, the movement is a little bit choppy uh, and it's not perfect, but you gotta start somewhere, I guess. So